silent marimba mallets, when played on a marimba, make no sound. I'm really glad I finally have a set of practice mallets for me to play like during the day or during night or wherever I am, no matter what the noise restriction is, it is just great. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of This Studio, my name is Adam, and it's time for the first ever Silent Marimba Mallets, the Malatech Late Night Series. Thank you so much for my studio VIPs, Robert Utomo, Will Flinner, Mallet Lab, Bradley Crowley, Ryan Carlisle, Greg Harris, Arthur Lipner, Doms Dominic Chung, Dean P. Newberger, and Scott Rader. Thank you so much for your continued support. And today's feature studio artist is Luke Gilbreth. Thank you so much for your continued support. And if you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash untan or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show. Once again, I hope you've been well. And yes, today we're going to talk about something very interesting. Practice mallets. Ever since I got this studio space, I've always been looking for a silent practice solution for playing marimba. Now, obviously we have practice pads for drums and we also have practice pads for marimba, like pads that look literally like marimbas. But unlike playing on something like a snare drum practice pad, you don't really get any sort of feeling when you play on a marimba practice pad because you don't hear any sound and usually the bar spacing is completely wrong anyway. And that's why the idea of practice mallets has always intrigued me, aka mallets that feel and look exactly like regular marimba mallets, but when played on a marimba, make no sound. Okay, that's actually not true. They do actually make some sound, but that's the point. They make just enough sound for the player to hear what they're playing, but not everyone else in the building. And you'd think just like practice pads, an idea like that would be produced by pretty much every mallet manufacturer in the world, but no. While I have seen practice mallets before made on special order by custom manufacturers and independent brands and just individual people who know how to make marimba mallets, I've never seen a big company like Vic Fair innovative percussion, encore, etc, etc, to make a practice mallet. I'm not really sure why, like I would sell so well. Enter the Malatech Late Night series, which is of course the culmination of my dream practice mallets. And no, Malatech didn't send these to me. These are so brand new. They only came out like three weeks ago and I literally bought them first thing in the morning when they came out because it's just really exciting. I finally get my dream practice mallets. So in my studio environment, because I have some neighbors who work during the day, I don't usually play in the daytime, which is why a lot of my studio videos happen at nighttime. Anyway, yes, these mallets are made by Malatech, And of course, I've done a whole bunch of Malatech reviews on this show. I don't personally use Malatech stuff that much, but I do like to try new things. So if you want to check out any of those reviews, the playlist is in the description below. And the series is called the Late Night Series, which is supposed to be named after the fact that you want to be practicing well after your curfew time in your college dorm or in your apartment building where maybe you have some noise restrictions and at night time at 3 a.m. you just want to be like And it comes in two models, the Late Night 1 and the Late Night 2. And the only difference is that the 2 is smaller than the 1 because the 1 is like a super soft and the 2 is a soft. So of course, naturally, I wanted to have the quietest sound possible. So I got the super soft and you can see the heads are enormous. The price of these mallets is okay. It's $34.95 for the Birch models and $36.95 for the Rattan models, which is very typical Malatec pricing, just under the $40 mark. And in terms of the grand scheme of rumor mallets, it's somewhat in the middle, albeit a little bit lower than expected. So not really that expensive and not like a super budget cheap mallet either. But I'm also glad that these didn't become like $50 plus because otherwise I'd be like, nope. Nope. So now let's take a look at the design. If you look at the top of the heads, you'll notice that they are this really nice lilac lavender purple color. I really like this color very, very much. The head itself is actually just a really squishy, spongy feeling course. I'm assuming they just have like a sponge ball inside and then they wrap the mallets in wool, like a really soft wool. I don't really want to take these apart because I paid for them, but <laughs> the heads are so squishy, which means that you just get that contact sound that we used to always hate on normal mallets, which is this. This would be absolutely terrible if this was a normal set of mallets, but it's perfect 
for being a practice mallet. And then we go down to the shafts and you'll notice that on my mallets, you can see just how inconsistent the stamping of the logo is. It's totally all over the place. Some of them are like wonky, some of them are straight. And then we also have this patent pending. So patent pending, if you don't know what patent pending means, it usually means a company is filing a patent for a new invention of some sort. And I believe it's of course the idea of a practice mallet. I'm personally fine with it because it makes the mallets look like a prototype. It makes them look like something that is not supposed to be officially released. And I'm sure the next generation of late night mallets won't have this patent pending thing. So resale value. Okay, but seriously, one of the things that I don't like about these mallets are the shafts. Now I know that Malatech uses sandy shafts on pretty much all of their birch models. If you've seen any of my videos on the Steven series, the Samu series, they all had this similar sandy shaft. But as I continued to use these mallets, I started to notice that this nice sandy finish was wearing away pretty quickly to become this really rough, unfinished texture, which I'm not really a fan of. It really feels very uncomfortable. And in fact, towards the bottom of the shaft, definitely not smooth ends make friends. No, no, no. My shafts came with the most unfinished ends I've ever seen on a birch shaft. There were just so many holes they're not even circular, they're quite oblong in some stages, and there's just bits and pieces sticking out. Now, I know some people will say, oh, Adam, you could just sandpaper the shafts and it'd be fine, they'd be just as new. But my question is, if I'm paying like 40 US dollars for mallets to use on tour or something like that, where it just needs to be up to standard, why do I need to sand the shafts myself? <laughs> like, isn't that why you buy mallets from people is so you don't have to do things like that? It's not good. Moving on to the ergonomics. Now these mallets are super, super light and easy to control because they have no cores. Like they are lighter than pretty much any other mallet I have, other than the fact that because the head is a little bit bigger, it does still tilt towards the front, but it's almost deceptively easy to use. Like, look at this. Like I can pretend that my one-handed roll is actually good. They are super light and super bouncy because of the sponginess, which means you can have a lot of fun with these mallets. And towards the bottom of the instrument, they are almost like a really spongy corral mallet. So of course, don't expect these to feel exactly like the mallets that you would actually use on stage because they feel nothing like it. For reference, here are the very similar Malatec LS15s, the Steven series, and these feel a lot heavier and a lot more direct than these. See, there's like no bounce. So I think it's important that you spend time with your real mallets just in case you get brainwashed by these. And now we get to the sound test. Yes, we are going to do a direct comparison between these late night mallets and some real marimba mallets, just so you can hear how quiet these mallets are. But before we do that, if you're enjoying this video, please hit that thumbs up button below. I would really appreciate it. And please hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads if you haven't already. All right, let's go. Thank you. 
yeah, let me know down in the comments below. What did you think of the Malasek Late Night series? Would you ever use this as a practice mallet? After playing with these for a long time, I started to forget what normal mallets sounded like. And then when I played with normal mallets, it was like, whoa! So loud! I'm really glad I finally have a set of practice mallets for me to play all of the things I want to play, like during the day or during night or wherever I am, no matter what the noise restriction is, it is just great. So let me know down in the comments below again, have you ever considered getting practice mallets? Do you own any practice mallets or do you have other solutions for practicing marimba without noise? I know a popular one is to remove the resonators. I would hate to have to do that every single time I wanted to practice. So. This is definitely better for me, but I want to know what you think. Anyway, once again, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And please hit that red subscribe button below if you haven't already to keep up with my uploads. Thank you so much for the support once again. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you guys next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night.